ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Um, it's it's James, I'm back. Um, as I said in the last video, there might be a London video. That didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, the person in the group who was like, oh yeah, let's go to London, they got called into work. <laughs> so um, a few people bailed and we ended up going to Portsmouth. Uh, I think I've got a small clip here, insert editing James. I don't have a small clip, then sorry. But yeah, we're in Portsmouth. Uh, we got there just as it started pissing down with rain. Had like one pint at the Weatherspoons and then came back. It was, it wasn't a shit trip, but it wasn't, it wasn't exactly the uh, what we were looking for. <laughs> it's still a bit of a laugh. But um, why am I uploading now? What, what, what has made me decide to grab the GoPro? Um, well, the second bike that I hinted at in the other video, it's nearly alive. Uh, Again, editing James, do your thing. Uh, I should have a clip on the screen here. Bulbs rattling around, remember? Those brakes are awful. I told you they no, are. No, they don't do anything. I told you. I said, take it easy, you got no brakes. Oh, yeah. I am, no worries. Hey. Hey, no, I stop it. <laughs> we need to bleed him, that's why. Huh? We need to bleed him at some point. <laughs> What's he like? Yeah. <laughs> it's a Honda VFR. I'm happy to reveal. <laughs> yes, a third Honda VFR. However, this one is the fifth gen, so this is a 1998. Um, it's the one before the generation that I've had before. So it has gear driven cams. I personally prefer the look, and uh, it has no ABS, which is one less thing to go wrong. Um, yeah, I bought this in a bit of a shit state, as mentioned, uh, for a thousand pound, ironically down in Portsmouth as well. Uh, <laughs> it's quite rusty. Um, the fork seals had gone and yeah just needed a bit of help so it's been sat as i've slowly restored it um i'll i'll throw a bunch of pictures on screen and you know sort of tell you what's happened with it so it needed front fork um seals and but the forks on it were shit anyway the stanchions were really heavily pitted so i found a bloke selling v a set of vtr front stanchions which looked nice like they, they look pretty good um with good fork seals etc um with vtr calipers and steel braided lines so for those who don't know the, VT the vfr uh, has a linked brakes so if you push the front or back they do the other you know they're, 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 it's a linked system well if you put vtr front calipers on and run it straight to the master cylinder then you you de-link the brakes it's going to rip out all the systems so again uh, on screen there'll be some pictures I've ripped out all the link brake system on that VFR, uh, which was a nightmare of a job because it's all hard, like hard lined. <laughs> There's a few flexi joints in there to obviously so you can maneuver it, but it's all mostly hard lined. Um, but yeah, that's all out. Um, so the brakes should be a lot nicer. The only thing I need to do now, braking wise, is the rear master cylinder. Because it's a link system, the rear master cylinder is like 18 millimeters. It's quite a massive master cylinder. Because obviously it's meant to be pushing fluid to the back and the front. So a common mod is what people do is they get the CBR 600F um, or the, like early uh, fire blade, like the 900s and 99s. Um, they get the air master cylinder, which is a 14 millimeter, which makes the brake pedal like actually have a bit of play in it. Right now, my, my rear brake uh, has like a one millimeter of movement and that, that locks the rear wheel. So that's kind of useless. <laughs> Makes a great parking brake, but yeah, I don't want to lock the rear wheel up every time I touch it. So that should be arriving today. So I'm recording this on Wednesday. Um, and also, so that the video of it running, which I, I hope I've spliced in at some point, that was on the last Saturday um, because I had a week off work because it was my birthday. I'm also 28 now, so I'm getting old. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got the bike working, um, got the nose cone on, the headlights in. Yeah, you can see it's, it's like a street fire in that sort of situation. 
Uh, came back the next day and went to start it and it wouldn't start. And we found out the starter motor had died in the night. Well, we're hoping the starter motor. I don't see what else it could be. We put a new battery in it. Um, the engine isn't seized because we tried bump starting it and it did try to fire. But it's, it's still on 10 year old tyres which are very flat and dry rotted. I do need to get new tyres for it but I haven't got the money right now for it. I just want to get it running and the bodywork on. That's my current current goals. So anyway, yeah, so we tried bump starting it. The engine tried to fire, but we didn't quite have enough push. So fingers crossed the start motor. Um, we tried to put 12 volts into the start motor and it wouldn't spin up. So the starter is dead. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. That's the only reason that, and there's not another issue. But yeah, right now you push the button and the solenoid clicks for the starter and it just doesn't do anything. It just turns the battery off. It's like it's over. I mean, it's shorting, the, the starter is shorting. So, um, Sorry, it's, it's raining, I'm trying to get the lens clear, but there's not much to see, I'm just... This is mainly an audio commentary. Um, so yeah, so that's the, that's the second bike, the VFR 800. Uh, again, hopefully soon that will be on the channel, like a POV ride. Um, I do have uh, some... I, I did a ride at home when I bought it. It had, had MOT, had ta you know, had, it, was all, it was all legal, you know. Um, the tyres were probably a bit dubious, but... Um, so I, I, I have a small, small clip here of what it sounds like. I love the um, gear driven cam sound. It makes that like whirring, whining noise. I, I love it. Some people hate it. Hey, you know, opinions, right? But yes, that's the VFR. What's happening with the ZX14 or the ZZR 1400? I'm going to call it a ZX14 because my fairings say that. I know I'm not, not American, but here's what it is. Um, this bike has also un undergone some work since the last video, so it's now got uh, a 16.2 front sprocket, so I've gone down one in the front, I've gone up one in the rear, so it's got a 42 rear. I've also splurged for a super sprock sprocket, which is um, a hybrid of aluminium and steel, so it's a bit lighter, with titanium sprocket nuts, again just to save a tiny bit of weight. And to make sure my speedo's all good, I've put a Heeltech uh, Speedo Helo V4 on. Super easy to set up, you just plug it in between the speed sensor and the bike, and then just set the offset. So all you do is you put your like, phone on your bars, get like Waze or Google Maps, or just something, something called a GPS speedo. Goes like 60 miles an hour, and then compare your speedo to what the GPS says, and then just obviously minus or plus the percentage of you know, how far it goes off. So with that minus one sprocket change, uh, my speedo is about 13% off. So I've set it to minus 10, so my speedo still reads a little bit high, just so, um, you know, I'd rather it speed read a little bit high, so if I go for like a camera or something, if I'm doing 60, I'm actually doing 50, like seven, so I, I don't want to get nicked. <laughs> um, but yeah, why did I go down a sprocket? Uh, two from the front and one up in the rear. Well, acceleration. This bike now pulls even harder. If I kick it down to, to a third, I'm not going to put it too hard. I've just left home, so it's still very cold. But she pulls now like a monster. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Also, the chain of rocket were quite worn out, so it was time for a change. So. Uh, me and my friend ended up doing it just to save a bit of money on labor costs. Uh, for anyone who wants to change a front sprocket, uh, the chain sprocket on the ZX14, be warned, that front nut is 120 newton meters. You cannot do it with uh, an electric ugga dugga, as we found out. Um, ugga dugga is slang for impact, impact gun. So yeah, so what you're meant to do is um, keep the rear sprocket and chain on, hold the rear brake, and then use like a 20 inch uh, breaker bar on the front sprocket to get the leverage. Uh, we didn't do that. We, we we cut the chain, changed the wrist sprocket, then went to the front and then we're like, oh fuck, we can't get this undone because their electric impact couldn't do it. I mean, the electric impact was rated to like 90 newton meters, which obviously is less than 120. So we had to, um, so we already had the new sprocket on and the chain was cut. So we put the new chain on, limped it to their, um, their workplace <laughs> and um, use, they, they have an air impact gun at our work, so we used that to whiz it off. 
So, I mean, we rode it with an old French rocket and new chain for about 10 minutes. It wasn't that much, but yeah, heads up. Just either have an air impact gun at home, if you're lucky enough, or do the rear brake method of, you know, hold the rear brake um, and use that to keep the wheel, keep, keep it all locked up, basically. Because, yeah, that, that, was, that was a horrible thing. Um, You'll see as well on the dash, the bike is nearly at, just about to nudge 49,000 miles, so... It, it, she's, she's plodding along, she's doing good. I, I've changed the exhaust again as well, which... Um, I'll do a sound clip at some point, I probably won't do it in this video because I want to get this uploaded on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, I've gone for it, so before I had a uh, China can, China number one, uh, it was a 200mm stubby, it was basically a, a fake Delkovic stubby. The only issue was, is my um, my Link bike is a Yoshimura one, which is 57mm diameter. And 57mm is a very weird size for anything that's not Yoshimura, so I had to use an adapter. So I made it go from 57 to um, uh, like 48, because it, it would basically go into the can. It, it looked really goofy, I didn't like it, but it worked well now i've got a 60 mil inlet can again another china one but you know it's 300 mil so it sounds a bit it's a bit quieter which is nice i can actually hear myself think oh. um and yeah so it's a 60 mil inlet so obviously it was a bit looser first so i i hammered in a um a cut off piece of metal which has a 57 mil internal diameter and a 60 mil outer diameter so it fits really really snug in this can and obviously the 57 mil internal means it slips very nicely onto the bike so it, it's a win-win um and yeah i'll put a picture on the screen i think it looks good i think it suits the bike it did come with a fake yoshimura sticker which i'm not putting on because it's not yoshimura i do think it's real carbon fiber though um so most china cans cost like 20p or 20 pounds <laughs> to buy this one was 27 pound plus 17 shipping so it was like quick maths time uh 44 pound or i think it was 50 after like import taxes and shit so it is a, a higher end china can and i'm um, comparing it to my friend's delkovic it feels exactly the same like I, i've had a fair share of fake carbon china cans yeah and you can tell it's a sticker you can feel it this actually feels like carbon fiber and it is very light so it might be genuine i don't know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say 100 but it might be um so yeah so the zx14 now has new chain sprockets a new china can Ooh. oh and we also did the uh front and rear pads because they were getting a bit low so yeah the kawasaki's happy it just needs a valve trick soon uh, uh, 52,000 is its next valve trick might do it a tad early uh, like 50,000 just because I do rev the shit out of this bike off camera or if anyone who's not following my Instagram do it like that James 96 I put it on the screen you're missing amazing content like this us at a Halloween car meet thing where um, upon leaving we're like hey fuck it <laughs> we may be bikes but we're blending in and just rev the shit out of this thing um, that was with the old China can this is again I'll, I'll get a new one on screen um, yeah Dad James 96 I tend to upload a bit more of it because well I don't need to put a mic and commentary on it I just it's just short little clips and just fucking about them usually so if you like that kind of footage and yeah, join us on there. But, um, yeah, I don't want to waffle on too long. I feel like this is going to be one of my longer videos in a while. Because, yeah, I had to update you on the second bike, this bike, and um, just what's been happening, really. Um, as for bike meets, well, it's winter now. And it's cold as shit. And it gets dark at, like, 5pm. It's horrible. So, I'm going to try to keep content coming, but it's mostly going to be 
shit you can just listen to the audio over it it's gonna be me going to work and just chatting about what's happening when the vfr is on the road uh, there will be a video of it i don't care like if the weather's shit or whatever i will do a video of it so, um it's first ride under its new restoration so like i said i rode it home from portsmouth for about 30 minutes so the, i know it's a solid bike just when i got it home it had a lot of rust underneath it and the link brakes i wanted to get rid of and yeah it, it just needed more and i've given it more so i'll end the video here i'm gonna carry on getting to work i've there's new headlights by the way I've, i know i've done a little video of it but they're really nice i don't know if i mentioned it in our commentary but instead of running um ebay leds i'm now running north sites which are a lot brighter definitely worth the money so i'll catch you in the next one i'm about to hit 49,000 miles on this trip yeah this bike's still ticking all right catch you catch you next time thanks for watching